China's biggest export is censorship, and it's changing your everyday life. The way you enjoy video games, wear clothing, or watch sports events is being shaped by the influence of the Chinese government. The Communist Party is able to use economic blackmail to coerce US companies to act as their political proxies. The stories of NBA and Activision Blizzard are not anomalies. They are a window into the future where China dictates corporate policies. These seven words were enough for Blizzard to ban one of their top players of Hearthstone for a year, take all of his prize money, and fire two commentators who interviewed Blitzchung. The game developer issued two official statements on their decision, one for their Chinese users and one on their English language blog post. On Chinese social network Weibo, Blizzard justified their decision as a way to protect the dignity of the Chinese nation. In English, Blizzard said Blitzchung's views did not have a role in their decision. They cited a violation of their terms of service that is broad enough to cover their initial sentencing. Blizzard was now facing backlash from both sides. They decided to compromise and reduce the punishment to a six-month suspension and giving Blitzchung his tournament money back. But this is not an isolated incident. Activision Blizzard has a long record for bowing to the demands of the Chinese censors. The company previously censored Hearthstone by changing artwork on 8 cards to remove gore and sexually suggestive content. In a similar fashion, they also censored visuals from World of Warcraft to appease with the Chinese regulators. Curiously, the Chinese share of Blizzard's gamer base is minuscule compared to their core Western base. The entire Asia-Pacific region, which also includes big gaming economies like Japan and South Korea, only makes up 12% of the company's revenue. The majority still comes from Western gamers, especially from North America. But Blizzard is willing to throw its traditional Western customer base under the bus. The number of monthly active users is sinking, and Blizzard sees China as the only lifeboat. The Chinese PC gaming market is worth $15 billion, and its gamer base will reach 354 million by 2023, which is more than the population of the United States. The gaming industry is experiencing a cultural shift because of China. A quarter of Steam users have changed their language settings to simplify Chinese, and they now constitute the biggest source of download traffic from Steam. This is a sign of a larger trend. From 2001 until today, the total market capitalization of the gaming industry in China climbed from $100 million to $32 billion. In more and more metrics, China is becoming a global economic hegemony, racing with the United States for the spot of the largest economy in the world. China is by far the single biggest e-commerce market, with almost $2 trillion in sales, nearly four times greater than the United States. Companies from around the world are lured into China and the country's strategy is to make their consumer market even more lucrative by boosting domestic spending and consumption. With 1.4 billion inhabitants, China has the world's largest internet population of over 700 million users. Companies that can't resist Chinese revenue streams can choose to censor themselves or be denied access to China altogether. But this is a matter of pure corporate choice. Nobody is forcing companies into China. Many Hollywood films break the box office in Chinese theaters, but at the cost of recutting their films. Bohemian Rhapsody removed and censored all scenes of Freddie Mercury's homosexuality from the Chinese version of the film. But the choice between profits and integrity is still there. Quentin Tarantino refused to recut Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where he depicts Bruce Lee as being arrogant and boastful. Many don't realize that it's not just their integrity they are trading for profits. Placating Chinese censors legitimizes the country's authoritarian regime that holds one million Muslims in indoctrination camps and subjects its population into atrocious surveillance and human rights abuse. But Chinese censorship doesn't just stay confined within the Chinese borders. As more and more corporations chase profits on Chinese markets, they find themselves blackmailed into complying with Chinese rules even outside of China's jurisdiction. The latest NBA controversy is the loudest example of this reality. A single tweet of a general manager at Houston Rockets on his personal account 
created a firestorm of backlash that will cost the NBA and other businesses hundreds of millions of dollars. Even though Mori later deleted his tweet and issued an apology, it was already too late as Chinese companies began pulling their sponsorship. Chinese state-run broadcaster CCTV cancelled all broadcasts of NBA preseason games, saying that freedom of speech doesn't include challenging a country's national sovereignty. This single move could cut off 500 million strong viewership and may cost the NBA $4 billion. But it doesn't end there. Even though Houston Rockets and the NBA denounced the tweet citing aims to bridge cultural divides, the Chinese Basketball Association suspended cooperation with Houston Rockets. The team's merchandise was ordered to be pulled from several Nike stores in China, and searches for all NBA sneakers on Alibaba and JD.com were removed from the results. This again put NBA into a lose-lose situation, as backlash hit back from the United States for pressing ahead with an exhibition game between Lakers and Brooklyn Nets in Shanghai. The Chinese government is trying to suppress any speech that challenges the official narrative. Professor of Public Ethics Clive Hamilton was denied his book about China's economic blackmail because publishers were concerned about pressures from Beijing. For China, censorship is a matter of maintaining power. Quietly, China is forcing foreign companies to accept their claims on territories of international disputes. Audi was forced to pull a map that offended Chinese people because it excluded Taiwan, South Tibet, and Muslim-majority Xinjiang region. Chinese retailer Muji was fined over $31,000 for listing Taiwan as a country of origin on their code hangers. Zara, Marriott, and Delta Airlines had to update their websites with the correct version of the Chinese map that didn't list Hong Kong and Taiwan as their own countries. Another company that decided to act as a proxy for the Chinese super-obsession with the Taiwanese flag is Apple. The iPhone maker removed the Taiwanese flag emoji from devices sold in Hong Kong and Macau. In the United States, Apple is notorious about its grandstanding on privacy and freedom, but only as far as it makes profit. When it comes to China, it's a whole different speak. Apple censored an app targeted at Hong Kong citizens that gave its users information about locations of police and ambulance, tear gas, and water cannons. The app attracted thousands of users and was crucial in keeping Hong Kong citizens safe from protests and violence. Despite reports of police brutality, safety of Hong Kong users is not included in Apple's terms of service. In the United States, Apple portrays itself as the only company in Silicon Valley that values privacy of their customers. Our customer was our product. We've elected to do that. We could make a ton of money. You are our product. You are a jewel. We care about the money. Privacy to us is money and something that is our product. We're going to traffic in your personal, your personal life. We've been doing this for years. Yeah. And if we can commit you to buy one iPhone, we could make a ton of money. In China, Apple banned all VPN apps from its App Store that could help Chinese users bypass the Great Firewall and avoid potential abuse of their human rights by Chinese authorities. In another move to comply with Chinese demands, Apple stores data and encryption keys of Chinese iCloud users on servers controlled by the Chinese government. Apple also updated its terms of service with a clause that says both Apple and the Chinese shell company hosting the server may access all user data. And just to make sure Chinese iPhone users won't read about it in the news, Apple also banned the New York Times app from the App Store. This happened conveniently at a time when Times was working on articles covering corruption in the Chinese government and the iPhone's biggest factory. The growing influence of Chinese authoritarianism puts the integrity of corporate America in question. Chasing profits at all costs means sacrificing the very values that allowed it to exist in the first place. If China's power remains unchallenged, it will unrecognizably transform the future of human rights.